extra minutes. How much fun are you having these days? Well, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm having fun that I remember. <laughs> As opposed to? <laughs> As to all the fun I had in the old days that I don't remember. Uh, I'm told I had a great time. <laughs> told by people who wish they couldn't remember, most you, likely. Well, yeah, those that do remember say I had a great time. different than the old days. Uh, we used to be able to stay up all night and go to the next show. Sometimes we did. I can't do that anymore. When you used to stay up all night and go to the next show, what assistance did you have? What were you taking to be able to do that? Me? Yeah. Well, I... Uh, was very fond, shall we say, of uh, cocaine and vodka and smoking camel lights. I tried a bunch of other stuff, but that particular combination worked for me the best in being able to function to some degree, at least I thought, and be high too. Uh, in uh, 1994, after a 30 year run, it was time for me to get sober. So I've been sober for 20 years. And it was the hardest thing I ever had to do. But basically, I hit bottom before I OD'd. <clears throat> and a lot of my friends. Unfortunately, didn't make it. Should I look at you or the camera? Look at me. Joe went on a 15 year yeah, drug and alcohol binge that only um, ended when Glenn and Don decided to put the band back together. That, uh, Their one condition the wild man had to be tamed. How frightening was it for you to play sober? for the first time? It was, it was pretty scary. It, it, it was beyond that. It was terrifying for me to, to do anything. I didn't know how to do anything. I didn't think I'd ever be funny again. I didn't think I would be able to write music, much less play in front of people. Everybody on the planet would discover that basically, I had no idea what I was doing. One thing I found in the music business is if you pretend like you know what you're doing, everybody thinks you know what you're doing. <laughs> and I just never wanted anybody to find out that I didn't have a clue. But in, re in retrospect, none of us really did. When the Eagles split in 1980, what did that do to you? Well, I, I didn't like that at all. You know what? We just had to stop. I never really want to say we broke up. We just had to stop. It mutated um, into something that ate us. We became so financially valuable as a property in terms of if we put an album out, it was the corporate quarter for the record company. And they didn't really care if it was good or not. And we just couldn't keep going. We, we couldn't do it anymore, so we stopped. Uh, except I kept going. I didn't want to admit that it was over. So what was the impetus for you getting sober? I just ran out of steam. I, I, just, I just flamed out. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. 
And I just had, I, I just admitted that all the vodka in the world wasn't enough. And, uh, and I was gonna die. Don and Glenn and our manager at some point came to me and said they were thinking of trying it again. And they didn't want to do it without me. And they couldn't do it unless I was sober. And they asked me if I thought I could get sober. And my feeling was, well, I sure try. That's a real good reason to get sober. And I didn't really have one before that. Have you had difficulty staying sober? Have you ever fallen off the wagon? Never. Never? Wow. No, no looking back. The Eagles blasted back into rock and roll like they'd never left. Why do we give up our hearts to the past? Yeah. And Joe Walsh was there with them. How are you feeling about coming to Australia? Wonderful. Wonderful. I have some history uh, in Australia. I'm trying to find this, the uh, timeline for it, but around 1985, uh, I went to Australia for a, a summer and played with a band called The Party Boys. And I did that three summers in a row. And I uh, made friends with a, with a whole cross section of the uh, of the musical community there. I knew, uh, well, I do know uh, Angry Anderson and the guys in uh, Midnight Oil, Peter and all those guys in the Divinos and Barnsey, <laughs> you know. And uh, I have dear, dear friends there and, and wonderful memories. So uh, it, it's like a kind of like a homecoming for me.